Oh, I've been looking at the real estate market and honestly, I want it for crash. Me, I want it for crash. <laughs> I want it for crash. Um, I'm going to show you guys some of them. You have um the one, you have some on South Avenue, um, two bedroom, three bedrooms so for like 95 million. Um, hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I need to find the next intro. Somebody drop a comment below and tell me when we can so I start my video. We can't bother everybody on YouTube I start them 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 video with. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Joe. <laughs> Anyway, guys, um, so today I'm going to talk about, um, you know, me trying to, I guess, move out, if you want to put it that way. I'm not moving out, by the way, but, you know, you have to plan ahead. And so I've been looking at the real estate market and honestly, I want it for crash. Me, I want it for crash. <laughs> I'm wanting for crash. Honestly, I want, and I'm surprised that it hasn't crashed. I've been wanting it to crash ever since this pandemic happened. Everything else will go wrong. It must it must crash. I mean, and maybe that's selfish because I'm not thinking about the consequences of it crashing and what could happen to the economy overall or if that and how much it would impact impact the economy. I'm just thinking that if it crash, we can buy the apartment or more. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking of. It might be selfish, but yeah, I don't know. I can't be the only person. I can't be the Is there anybody watching this video right now that wants the real estate market in Jamaica to crash? Or even in your own country? What it? Because people overseas watch my channel, Trinidad, the UK, Canada, America, big up in itself, Barbados, Antigua. Um, if I miss out anybody, don't feel any way. I'm just calling off the top of my head. But tell me, how is the real estate market in your country? And do you want it to crash? I want mine to crash because I want ours in Jamaica to crash because the prices are ridiculous and they keep getting more and more ridiculous. Like, how do they expect young people to achieve um, something of their own? You know, uh, a lot of us, majority of us, were not born with a gold spoon in our mouth. We not have no no house to pass down to it well some people not know how to pass down to them and all of these things i'm having issues um you know trying to to locate something that i can afford and i hear it from my peers too a lot of us um having that issues like the prices are just ridiculous and somebody needs to do something about it or the market just needs to simply crash yes <laughs> and also tell me what you get because for me how is it for your parents compared to you in terms of um, acquiring a house? Because for me personally, my dad, um, my parents bought our house from when my dad was like in his mid to, to late 20s. And young people know it is very few people who are able to do that. And even like kids that I grew up with from my neighborhood, all of our parents were in the same age group, which means they would have acquired the house their house in like that same age range and I think it's harder nowadays for young people to acquire something of their own tell me if you guys agree and that's what I've always said and, and a lot of people agree with me I have this conversation with my brother because even though my brother has acquired his house um you know a lot he didn't do it as young as my dad was when he did his and I know for a lot of people, people can relate to that. So tell me how it is. Were your parents able to acquire a house at a younger age than what you did? Because I think as time goes by, I would say nowadays, it's harder for us um, to get something compared to back then. So tell me what you guys think. Drop a comment below um, and let me know. Um, it's definitely more hard up, meaning you have to have more... Um, you have to meet more requirements, um, you know, the, the cost of living is different, everything. Um, so yeah, drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts on that. Yeah, so besides that, um, I don't know if you guys are aware of the prices, right? And so for me, if you don't, the most developed areas or cities in the country is Portmore, and Kingston. I'm not very um, versed or know much about Mobe um, in terms of new development or even development. The developments that I know of in Mobe are like 
high-end places right so maybe there are apartments developing i see one or two pop up about the place down in trelawney you know i think it's ochi but i'm talking about most developed areas overall the most developed cities that people drift to and that's kingston and portmore honestly people only come to portmore because they probably can't afford kingston prices that's probably the only reason there is just no space left within the prices that they can afford um also in terms of Kingston now, Kingston is already so densely populated and overcrowded. There is hardly any space left for anything to happen in Kingston. So what you find is that a lot of, back in the days, a lot of houses um, had huge land spaces. Like the houses in Kingston, check up, uh, um, check up Heavendale side, check up um, Mona side. Um, any one of those residential areas you will realize that those check kingston by those areas with houses those spaces are big they're huge and what you find is that these investors and developers have approached some of these houses especially the ones who have run down because you know they're probably not being taken care of by family members or people just genuinely can't afford to upkeep their places um just based on financial um crisis are based on the economy and their situation so what i find is that these investors and what's sad no it's not just investors is some of these um institutions like i know i'm not calling the name but some of these financial institutions are doing the same so they're approaching these residents and offering them money for their houses their land knocking down the houses demolishing everything and building up some huge ass apartments and then selling them for how much money anywhere from you don't you can't get nothing for less than 30 million something new not that i'm in a good area that is um you're looking at anywhere from 30 to 100 million that is just for one apartment um of course it may have two bedroom three bedroom whatever but it's an apartment you know yeah it's not like it's a house where if a couple of years you decide you want to extend or do an expansion you can do that no it's an apartment once you buy it as a three bedroom or two bedroom that's all you're gonna have okay that's all you're gonna have so they're selling these bedrooms are these apartments for how much millions which is just ridiculous and a lot of people cannot afford them a lot of people cannot afford them right now and so that's why i want the market to crash um so what you find is that these apartments no they're just there and i guess somebody's buying them up people are buying them up but based on the conversations with my peers who are very successful these prices are ridiculous and i totally agree so um like i said you know apartments are dropping everywhere in kingston it is crazy i'm, I'm gonna show you guys some of them you have um the one you have some on south avenue um two bedroom three bedrooms for like 95 million um Two bedroom, three bathroom, three bedroom, three bathroom, Nine, anywhere from 95 million and 93 million. Then you have on Waterloo Avenue, um, three bedrooms for like 85 million. Three bedroom, three bathroom, 85 million. That can buy you a house in up. That can buy you probably like three to four Portmore houses. Three to four houses in Portmore. You just need to fix up that house to make it look good. So, right? I'm more for houses than apartment, but as I said, houses in Kingston, you know you don't even want to consider that right now at least not for me as a starter i i'm not looking at a house in kingston if i was to live in acquire something in kingston it would definitely have to be an apartment because houses can be less than 100 million and mm -mm -mm. yeah um so definitely my reach is just apartment for kings for portmore however it's houses and my as i said my biggest problem with portmore is the traffic the traffic the traffic it would work out if I was solely an entrepreneur, then that would be awesome. As a matter of fact, guys, please can you go and follow my my business page on Instagram? It's called Tabs J A Accountant. T A B S J A Accountant underscore Accountant, I believe. But I'll put it down there. Please go and follow my business page. I appreciate the support. There isn't much activity on there of lately because I've been busy, but the business is up and running. Anyway um yeah so if you're an entrepreneur and you have a nice house in portmore then you can get it for a good 
price and that's good because that way you have the freedom you don't have to be in traffic to leave in the morning or to come out in the night at least you're flexible enough to work around that so i think like for entrepreneurs and people like that it will work out if you want to acquire even a few houses in portmore then kudos to you because it's not a bad area and as i said it's been it's being developed and based on what i know they're developing Caribbean estate too they're developing Phoenix Village Park too. Then they have a new development um, for Dumbo Hole in that area. So all of the land space, they're soon gone to residential community. And it just pains my heart because I see the potential and I wish businesses would invest in Portmore more um, to provide us residents with the opportunity to stay in the area and not so much drift towards Kingston. Most people, are are maybe not most but a large number of people are working from home everybody at the school online so just cut out school the, the, and you know our young people um are the majority in our population so all those young people are at home from kinder to college they're at home so they're not included in this traffic imagine if we weren't in the pandemic what the traffic would look like and i can tell you personally before the pandemic when we had traffic my work didn't start until eight o'clock and i used to have to leave portmore before six o'clock if i ever let six o'clock catch me in my house i would not make it to work on time and so what you find is that when i leave out 5 30 i reach work before six o'clock and i have to, i'm at work from six and work doesn't start until eight now luckily for me during that time especially when they had the road work going on luckily for me i was studying so when i got to work at 6 a.m i had two hours in which i could do some school work do some studying and that worked out fine nowadays i'm not studying um and luckily i mean the pandemic has you know prevented people from moving as i said people are home from school and work and so the traffic isn't as bad so i'm able to leave out at a reasonable time enough to give me enough sleep and leave out to head out to work right um the prices are as i said my i want investors to invest in portmore more um for me i think portmore has potential um the biggest problem in Portmore is that it is uh, developed as a residential area and not so much a commercial area. So what you find is that people can afford to live in Portmore, but all of those people who live in Portmore, majority of the people who live in Portmore have to leave Portmore on a daily basis to either go to work or go to school or whatever it is else <laughs> that they do. There is hardly anything commercial to the informer. I must say, it has developed um, significantly commercially. I will say that. I will give them that. Um, you have a lot of business places over here, a lot of financial institutions over here. You have NCB, have them big ass building out of the mall. So that's one. You have JMB out there as well. Um, closer to Pineside, you have um, First Global, you have Scotia, and on the plazas down on pines itself you have um jn and you have sajkar bank um and you see the develop and that's a good sign that's good that those businesses ha see those businesses see the potential of portmore and have invested to the point where they actually have their own building and not just renting a space most of the banks that i've called for them have their own spaces and not just rental they can all afford it they can afford to own a commercial spot here in portmore to provide the residents of portmore with jobs so that they don't have to leave every day that is the cause of the daily traffic have you guys ever seen the traffic to come to portmore to leave portmore or to come to portmore on a daily basis it is ridiculous there is only two roads in and out of portmore if you're going to kingston that is either by mandela or you take the highway the toll the toll so is that the toll um which is i think a which highway that name remember what and they have the mandela highway right a lot of people um cannot afford to pay toll on a daily basis so people like those resort to mandela and that's fine um 
but you should see the traffic on the toll on a daily basis it is ridiculous and then i hear that the traffic on mandela is has gotten even worse because not just poor more people are traveling um on my on mandela you have people from clarinda and spanish town mobe all of the people coming from the western side of the island are taking that road so in the morning you have all plus people from portmore coming from that side to head into kingston to either go to work or to to transact business or to go to the airport or you know just it's just ridiculous i think that the government and these businesses need to invest more into portmore so that everybody don't have to be leaving um i think the schools can be more developed and you know this thing about traditional high school and da, 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 da. the universities as well could i think should develop our site the universities as well i believe could plant their seed in portmore as well because you have ue and you take and they're all in kingston st andrew and so um i strongly believe that there's space that's the thing you know there is space put more up wallipa space wallipa space the over here the problem is that these spaces have been acquired by um developers who are developing residential areas investors who are building um apartments residential communities everything is probably 90 95 90 to probably 95 or put more 90 to 95 percent of the the land and spaces in portmore is um residential um lots and i just think that's ridiculous right and because of that um you know it's a little bit cheaper to to buy a house in portmore or to rent a house in portmore and so that's the only reason why people resort to here and it's not a bad place it's not it has developed a lot of other businesses have come you have sovereign village here now you have all you have there's a go-kart track out there and of course we have Shaw. can't fail for that <laughs> there are a lot of little, little spots that you can go to to have there are a lot of restaurants building up um hot spots where you can go chill so we have those little things the things we're missing is the schools and the business places to afford people jobs and um, opportunities to to get education within Portmore so that we all don't have to be leaving every morning at the same damn time and I'm I think this pandemic has been a blessing in that regard because a lot of people are able to work from home and of course um, the schooling from home as well and I hope I honestly hope that some of these uh, business places have realized that have realized and will take into consideration even after the pandemic that they can allow staff to work from home because it's still they're still efficient and productive people need to move away from this old time thing of you know you have to be at the office under the boss nose in order to be productive and do some work no people can work from home and do it productively and i'm really happy um that people are this pandemic has proven that so kudos to you pandemic <laughs> and i'm moving until i get my home i think that's a smart thing to do um as is, you guys go watch my video on why i'm still living at home um i'll put the link in the description below um yeah watch a video on why i'm still living at home and why i want to move into mine i think that's a smart thing to do and as i said i've always been jumpy and sometimes frustrated like i can't without this traffic i'm just gonna go rent somewhere in kingston and then every time i say it especially to my friends who do rent places in kingston they're like no jody stay in your yard stay, are you having a problem at your house stay in your yard everybody says it to me all the time every time i'm like this close to they're like and I'm like, all right, fine, I'll stay. <laughs> but um, it's, you know, mm, gosh, yeah, it's, it's, time will tell what happens. But drop a comment below to tell me your thoughts on, on everything that I spoke about and your experience per personal. Do you live in Portmore? Do you live in Kingston? But you, listen, everybody that I know that live in Kingston would not move to Portmore. People who I know have moved from Kingston to Portmore is because they can't afford 
they can't afford the houses in Kingston. So they have to. People who never live at Portmore from them born. But because they're at that stage in their life where they're trying to acquire a house, but Kingston prices are so ridiculous, it doesn't even make any sense. So those people move to Portmore, right? So, yeah. Drop a comment below to tell me what you guys think. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next vlog. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my videos. If any of my videos that you think may be useful to somebody that you know, feel free to share it. But, um, yeah. So, bye guys.